Hello, hello everybody, this is TiptopMTG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Standard Rotation and the cards I am sad to be seeing leaving Standard. So last week I did a video where I talked about the cards that I was happy were leaving Standard, whether they were too powerful, they were, they've been in the meta too long, they're just annoying to deal with. I, I talked about all those, but in today's video, I'm going to talk about the cards that I am sad are leaving standard, uh, whether it be that they're just fun to play or just they're, they're just special to me in some way, and so I'm going to talk about all of those uh, here today. If you guys don't know what rotation is, it's this big event that happens once per year where the four oldest sets in standard rotate out, meaning that they're no longer legal in standard. If you want to see a video where I talk about rotation and just all the little intricate questions about it, I'll leave a link in the description down below. Check that out. So without further ado, why don't we break this down? So I would say one of my favorite cards and probably one of the more annoying cards on my list is Risen Reef. And honestly, yes, Risen Reef in the deck it was in for a while was quite obnoxious, but I just had so much fun and not using it like, you know, in a deck with Feel of the Dead. I played it in a deck with just, it was Risen Reef, a couple elementals that maybe ramped me, but then a bunch of duplication spell. Quads I duplicate, uh, Mythos of Aluna now, you know, Spark Double, all of those, and then I would have like 17 Risen Reefs, and then I would win with a Jace. And that was like my favorite thing to do. Now, yes, I did run Field of the Dead, because why wouldn't you win that deck? It's just a stall plan, but I don't think I ever killed anyone with zombies. They were always there for defense, and it was just such a fun deck to play, and I still find white janky ways to use Risen Reef, and it's just so much fun. Now, of course, it will be in Historic where I can build my deck with my Field of the Dead and Red Zendikar Royal and all that, but uh, it's going to be sad to see it leave. I know it's in Simic Colors, I know it's a ramp card, and I know I talked a lot about Simic Ramp in the last one, but it's going to be nice, or it's going to be sad, sorry, to not have Risen Reef as my, ooh, fun card that I want to put in a deck. Now this next one is going to be a little bit of a, a similar to Risen Reef, Casualties of War. Now, recently, so when I first thought of this video idea, this was actually before Corset 2021 even came out, and Casualties of War was nowhere on my radar of a meta good card. Uh, and then I wrote this list slowly out, shortly after Corset 2021 came out, just so I could see how the meta was. And, you know, Casualty of War really didn't see that much play. Now it's being really annoying, so maybe I'll be a little bit happy seeing it rotate out. But I just enjoyed using it in more of a janky mid-range kind of deck, not as part of some Sultai ramp nonsense. So, you know, in the sense that it's being used now, kind of happy it's rotating out, but in the idea that, you know, I could use it in some jankier decks, uh, where maybe I duplicated a whole bunch using Thousand Year Storm, which I know doesn't sound that fun to play against, but it's, like, very janky. I really enjoyed it there, but uh, it, the way it is being now, maybe this wouldn't be on my list. Maybe I'd replace it with something else that's just slightly more fun to play with. But at this moment, like, quads I duplicate. I'm kind of sad that's leaving. So maybe quads I duplicate takes this place. But Casualties of War, I still enjoy for its uh, unique little janky purposes, not the meta purposes. Next, we have Krenko 10 Street Kingpin. This is a fun card that can be used in so many ways. Uh, you can try to dump a bunch of counters on it. It can be just part of a generic goblin deck. But I feel like any way you build it, it's not going to be a serious deck unless you're in Historic. So in Standard, it's going to be kind of sad to see him leave. I can't just proliferate him up a bunch. Also, proliferate is leaving. That's kind of sad, but also exciting because Planeswalkers are kind of annoying sometimes. But um, uh, that's not the point. Krenko was just always this fun little card that I felt like my opponent had to answer and if they didn't I got to have a blast creating a ton of one ones just overall a really fun experience to use and if you've never built a Krenko deck I recommend you try it within the next little bit it's also really awesome for brawl just uh I love Krenko next we have icon of ancestry this one's kind of just there isn't a lot of tribal support anymore it's, especially once this rotates there won't be a lot of cards that say choose a tribe or choose a creature type something something with that creature type uh, and it's gonna be sad when this leaves that we will really not have that anymore you basically have to pick a tribe that they picked for you whether it be cats or something but if you want to pick your own creature type of i don't know goats 
I don't know how you would do that in standard, but you can't anymore because cards, this one card was kind of the one less, ooh, this is a do anything, you know, tribe card. So that's kind of sad to see it leave. I really enjoy tribal decks sometimes. Sometimes they're kind of annoying, but generally they're pretty good. So now you're going to be forced into doing like knights if you want to do a tribe. So I really hope in Zendikar we see some new, like, oh, choose a creature type. They get plus one, plus one. Even if that's all the card did, I'd be happy, but it's kind of sad to see this one leave. Next we have Tolzomir Friend of Wolves. So this was actually one of my first really janky decks where it was a Garouk Tolzomir deck where I would just create tons of wolves and have them fight and it was just so much fun. It's very similar to Krenko. It's like, oh, this is definitely not competitive, but it is just so much fun to be like, wolf, 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 wolf. How can I generate wolves? Especially in a time where I had the deck slightly before Garouk came out and it was originally Slesnian and they were like, seven wolves in standard so i was like okay guess i'm playing every single wolf and then eventually i was like oh i can't cut this wolf because now there's more wolves and I, it, it was just a blast to play again this is a deck i recommend you try playing it was a lot of fun Next, we have Thousand Year Storm. This one, again, is kind of the king of jank. You know, you can do so many weird things with it. It is a very stormy card. It's not going to be really competitive, but whatever you're going to do, it's probably going to be fun. Whether you're creating lots of copies of Mythos of Aluna to create more copies of Thousand Year Storm to make more copies of Thousand Year Storm, I, you know, any of that's possible, but just the endless, there are endless possibilities with Thousand Year Storm, and it will be sad when I can no longer do that in standard. Next, we have of murder now i don't know if you realize this but murder has not been printed since throne of Aldrain. uh and so if it's not printed in zendikar rising this will be the first time in a while that i've been in a standard without murder now i know murderous rider it's a better card but when i'm trying to teach a new player hey here's the uh you know here's magic you want to build a oh black and white deck you want some removal okay i recommend murder wait no murder's rider wait that's a rare so i just kind of hope that in zendikar rising we see murder or something or maybe they're trying to move away from kill spells that are that efficient slowly so maybe they're going to be like oh you know now finishing blow is what is going to be considered a good kill spell for standard which would be a massive power down which means temporarily that would be a big issue where murder's rider is the only really good kill spell but after the next rotation, maybe you do have something like Finishing Blow be the best spell for killing a creature, which would be kind of interesting to see such a powered down standard in comparison to what we have now where removal is everywhere. Next, we have a Johnny's Pride Mate. Now, a Johnny's Pride Mate uh, was introduced back in Coruscant 2019 into standard, and it has been there ever since, seeing a reprint in War of the Spark. Uh, but it's going to be sad that its days are finally numbered. Um, you know, it is kind of the pinnacle of a life gain deck. I know life gain decks aren't that good, and some people find them really annoying, but I don't find them nearly as annoying as someone saying no, 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 no to everything I do. You know, sure, gain a bunch of life. That's cool. You're letting me do what I want to do. I'll let you do what you want to do. Versus someone who's just like, board wipe, board wipe, counter spell, board wipe. Uh, that's not as fun to play against. Or even just a red rush deck. It's like, nope, poof, you're dead. You know, turn three, I just swung at you for 72 with Embercleave. So, it's, you know, I don't really see it as this annoying archetype. I know I've seen a lot of people, especially on Reddit, who are like, oh, you know, life gain. That's just the most annoying archetype in standard. And I'm just like, eh, is it really? I mean, it's not that great if you can build up a big enough defense generally and they just get stopped in their tracks and they just it's not that amazing of a deck but i consider it to be fun to play if you guys have a problem with life you know let me know in the comments down below let me know what you guys are thinking maybe there's something i'm not considering i mean i guess it's annoying that now you have to take your opponent from like 40 life down to zero instead of 20 yes that's annoying but they just spent all their resources doing that so it's kind of the same as just putting up blockers except the blockers just immediately go to your health which I guess, or your life, which I guess is annoying if your whole thing is, oh, I'm going to board wipe so that I can always swing through. I don't know. Either way, that's, oh, sorry, my little tangent. Number two, or my second to last one, is Spark Double. So this is a, again, kind of janky card. I could I could have seen it seeing a place somewhere in the meta, but it's kind of cool to be able to take something that's not meant to be duplicated and duplicate it. So, you know, you have Yarick who duplicates all and ETB effects. So then you get Spark Double, you duplicate Yarrick, and now you got two Yarricks. Now you're like tripling all ETB effects. And now you're, it's just so much fun. Uh, 
you know, you can duplicate Planeswalkers. It's kind of this just card I can throw into any deck, and it's just like, oh, it'll be whatever the best thing on my side of the battlefield is, whether it's legendary or not. And so that's really fun. And then at number one, and this is kind of a weird one, it's Healer's Hawk. This kind of is in the same vein of a Johnny's Pride Mate, but just Healer's Hawk. It's like, whenever I think of a white deck, no matter what it is, there's always the thought in my mind that, oh, I should throw in Healer's Hawk. Now, that's kind of been mitigated a little bit by Elset of the Life's Bounty, but, you know, in a Azori's Flyer deck, in a, which is kind of annoying, but in a Life Gain deck, in a, just a mono white deck, just... Healer's Hawk. Now, this list isn't exactly in order. I might be a little bit more sad to see a Johnny's Pride Mate. But this is, these are just my general top 10 cards I'm sad are leaving standard. I want to know what you guys are sad about leaving standard. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed, please hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.